We're going outside the book, live to you from the Carol Nicely Center on the south campus of Western Kentucky University. I'm Barbara Deeb here at the Southern Kentucky Festival of Books 2011, and we are very pleased to talk this morning with the headliner, Nicholas Sparks. Do you like to go by Nick or Nicholas? Nicholas, okay. really, I mean, when I'm in public. I mean, people call me everything from uh, hey you to my wife might call me hun, or I know I'm in trouble when she calls me Nicholas, but usually okay. out in public it's Nicholas. Well, you're not in trouble, Nicholas, yes. but let's talk a little bit about, about you. You know, reading your bio, it doesn't seem to me that you set out to be a writer. Hmm. Uh, and so how'd that all happen? Uh, I, I still... Yeah, I didn't. I, I never grew up thinking I was going to be a writer, but I don't think that that is that makes me atypical. I really think that 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 makes me probably more typical, especially as, as at least if you're looking at bestseller lists for whatever they're worth. I mean, John Grisham started out. He was a lawyer. David Baldacci was a lawyer. Uh, Pat Conroy was an English teacher. Danielle Steele sold. Uh, she was in public relations. Mary Higgins Clark was a you know a homemaker. So. I think the, 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 the key, I guess, distinguishing characteristic of all of us and, and most of the people who, who do that is just a, a strong desire hits them at one point in time to eventually tell a story and then they, they go through their own learning process to get there, whether it's uh, they, they go to law school or they, and, but no matter what, every one of them actually sat down and said, okay, I'm actually going to put some words on the page. And I'm going to tell a story. And I'm going to tell a story. And your stories are very romantic, very poignant, very touching, and they really have touched, as you probably could tell better than anybody, such a wide array of people, of readers. So let's talk, let's break that down, if you will, because, I mean, first of all, romance, what, what is that? Uh, well, you know, romance in literature is, is a very specific genre, one that, ironically, I actually do, do not work in. I, I, I don't write romance novels, really. They're more, I don't know what they are. You could call them uh, love stories. You could call them dramatic fiction. Uh, but they wouldn't even be accepted as a romance novel because those tend to have a very specific structure that you have to follow and very specific themes, none of which I do. Um, so uh, these are stories that really are meant to move the reader through the entire range of human emotion. That's what I write and that's what most dramatic fiction or dramatic theater or dramatic film, that's really what they're attempting to do is to move you through the entire range of human emotion of which uh, love is part of that, sadness is part of that, anger, happiness, joy. And if you can do all those things well, I think it, it tends to resonate with the audience, whatever that is. And really, that, that's what I set out to do. So not just one emotion, not just move them in one direction. You're giving them the whole gamut. And that's that's the big difference. In, 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 a, in a romance novel, you, you, that's not a requirement. You're really supposed to evoke the feeling of a romantic fantasy. In this, this genre, no. I mean, it's, it's pretty much all of the emotions of, of life. And it's a very effective little genre you might say or a very effective medium whether it's in film or theater because if you do that just right the audience whether again it's a reader or someone in the in the in the seats by feeling as if they've experienced all the emotions of life they really feel as if they've lived a mini life by the time they finish and that's why it tends to resonate that's why people remember the notebook for such a long time or they remember a walk to remember for such a long time it's because it made them they lived an entire life with with these two characters okay, and so that's an important um distinction between my genre and what other genres do you know thrillers are really supposed to thrill a horror novel is really supposed to scare you they don't have to move you through every emotion but that is just the function of the, the genre I work in. Well, that having been said, that sounds like it's more taxing on the writer because you've got to set out to do just that. It is. I think it is. I mean, I always it's funny, you know, I when I talk to other best-selling authors, and really we don't hang out in a club or anything. This is <laughs> oh, I probably darn. I probably see them as much as anyone here at the book festival, to be quite frank. Maybe once every two or three years, and they'll say things. Boy, I just love writing. I'm like. Are you crazy? I find writing incredibly challenging. But then that could also just be that, you know, they're better at it or they're more natural. I don't know. I mean, I find the whole thing very hard because you do have to do it just right. You have to evoke the emotion with a real, you have to evoke genuine emotion as opposed to manipulating it. You, you have to be dramatic without being melodramatic. 
You have to be universal without being cliched. Yes. All, <laughs> all of all of those things to really lessons. do it well and make it resonate for for an extended period of time. Well, talk about resonate for an extended period of time. The longevity of your work and then taking it into the dramatic arena. So many movies have been made from your books. Talk a little bit about that because I think you know when I told people that you were coming and we were going to be talking to you, that's what they said. Does he now write then with the fact in mind that this may become a movie? In the end, I'm always a novelist, and that's really important because you don't know Hollywood. Hollywood, I mean, there was a couple of novels that I knew would sell for film. I knew The Guardian would, for instance, and I knew The Choice would. They didn't. The one that I knew wouldn't, Knights in Rodanthe, did sell, and not only that, it actually got made and did very well. So I have been around long enough to know that you can't predict Hollywood. Um, so really, I set out to write the best novel that I can, and, and then uh, I'm, I've, I've been very fortunate with, with regard to Hollywood. Take us, share with our viewers what it was like when you got the phone call that your book was being optioned and it had been accepted and they were going to make a movie. Do you remember what that yeah, feeling was yeah, like? Yeah, you know, I was, it was a few days after I, uh, I had sold the novel and it just came out of the blue. And I remember thinking very distinctly that, you know, this is a very odd life that I'm leading now. All of a sudden these things are happening. But at the same time you have to realize that that first novel was The Notebook. That was in 2000, I'm sorry, I sold that for film in 1995. That film didn't start till filming until 2003. Wow. And so there was this really long time. And I'll tell you, that whole journey is the novel in and of itself. You know, you're going to do this and this screenwriter and he does that and they don't know what to do and they sit on it and Steven Spielberg thinks about he's going to be do something with it. So it sits on the shelves for a year while they wait. Crazy stuff. But it was exciting. I, I think the more exciting film was the second one. Uh, it was the first film, Message in a Bottle, because that went into production just so fast. I sold it when I wasn't even done with the novel. I was only halfway done. I had an outline for the rest. Warner Brothers bought it, and by the time I finish the novel, they're already done with the first screenplay. Wow. And I'm like, now that's fast. Well, but then when you saw it, what, yeah. you know, sitting there in the screening room or whatever, yeah. uh, what kind of emotion did that evoke? <laughs> the, first, the first time is a bit of disbelief. You, you see names, you know, it's like, wow, I picked the name Teresa and Garrett. That's so neat, you know. Wow, happenstance, I picked that name. You know, so you go and, and you feel these little bits of, uh, excitement and then you just settle in and watch the film and evaluate the film on its merits and I will be honest it's a little different now since I've done it so many times it's still exciting but you know your first time it's always uh, something you'll remember forever is that a problem now though that you're at that place in your career in your life you know um, you're out there so are you still being genuine to what you set out to be genuine to? As far as the, the, the quality writing. of the work? Yeah, of course. I mean, that's uh, the nature of my personality, though. I, uh, it's just more the nature of my personality. You know, people say, do you have deadlines? I say, yes, and this is true. But my publisher isn't going to fire me. I know this. <laughs> I, I do know this. Job security? Yeah, I do. So why do I put the... Because it really is me and what I'm trying to do. And really, I, I sit down and try to write the best novel that I can with every novel that I write. And while all authors will tell you this, um, this is not true. Because... Um, uh, you don't have to once you reach my level. You can just begin to write the same book pretty much over and over. Uh, but really, I try to vary everything in my novels every time. And so there's always a challenge there. And I'm just the kind of person who really loves a challenge. And that's it. It's People, just the nature of, of my personality. You talk about the challenge, but you also said it's a bit challenging that you're not crazy about writing, per se, the, the, the process. Yeah. So take us through, we've got just a couple minutes remaining, your day-to-day. -day. Do, you, do you force yourself to sit down and write for X number of hours? Most days. Most days when I'm writing a novel, a novel might take uh, four or five months, and let's say that I write uh, 2,000 words a day, and so... Uh, and, I, and it'll take me, let's say, 140,000 words writing to get the 90,000 that I keep. So 140,000 divided by 2,000 is 70 days, and that would be in a four-month period. So out of about 120 to 150 days, I'm writing 70 of them. And then the other days, 
I'm thinking endlessly about them. And so, you know, it might be, I usually write midday, 10 to 2 or so. 2,000 words, it might take anywhere from 3 to 5 hours. Sometimes it takes up to 8. Uh, I edit as I go through the process the whole time. Good to know. And 2012, Lucky One comes out in 2012, the Lucky One comes out. Safe Haven starts filming this year. Uh, lots of, many more films. So it, it's good. I mean, I've, like I said, I've been very fortunate. And you've been uh, very kind to share your time with us. We've been talking with author Nicholas Sparks, coming to you from the 2011 Southern Kentucky Festival of Books.